Today I'm going to show you how to replace an oxygen sensor. My car start having the engine a light on and I use a scanner to scan the code. The code is P0141 which is secondary oxygen sensor. Can you show us the whole clipboard please? Okay, so this is something you copied from where? From, uh, this is a uh, uh, copied from service manual. Okay. So that's the code. So this is an oxygen sensor. It's pretty long and there are four wires here. I use the multimeter to measure the resistance of the heater. It's uh, around 6 ohm. It's probably okay. So I put it back but the still the engine light it came on so I decided to replace it. This one is the universal one. See how short it is? If you do it, you need to cut somewhere here and this is the old one I just took it out and um, this is new one so the next question is if you replace the oxygen sensor where do you get it two options one is uh, use a generic third party which is cheaper and I got that part here a Bosch so it's pretty short like this short so you have to cut the wire make the connection the advantage and disadvantage of comparison, you can see from here, the advantage is you don't have to remove the seat of the car because the, the wire is buried under the seat and it's cheaper. But disadvantage of the mini is so you have to cut the wire, make the connection, there's some work there. And I measure the resistance of uh, Bosch is 4 ohm versus 6 ohm. So it's not as much heat efficient. A lot of other viewer report it may not work because you have to make a connection under the car. It could have a corrosion even though it says it's waterproof. So it's, there's a still a chance. The second point, if you do want to use the universal oxygen sensor, you need to really be careful about the wiring. On this side is the Honda, the color I mapped to the universal wiring. So you have to really carefully double check to make sure it's, this is correct. If you don't make the correct connection, you may damage the PCM controller. I decided to go with the genuine Honda part. To save you some money, I will show you three different ways to make a purchase for the genuine Honda part. The first way is certainly is Honda's local dealer. They quoted me 126. The advantage of us, the local, I can go there and get it the same day. But because this type of thing is not a critical, I can wait a few days. So the second, you go to a Honda's website called eStore.Honda.com. It's a $91. You specify pickup from your local dealer. So you purchase from the website but pick up it local and which is cheaper. The third option is you can go to many other Honda dealers site. It's online. Most likely at least the one I checked is around $70 but you really have to watch for the shipping around $10. So I made that purchase online. Another thing when you purchase make sure at least for my part is a California emission. In other words, it meets the California emission standards. And you can give them your VIN number that will automatically pick up the correct parts for you. Hmm. That's interesting. I need uh, some tools and this is a 14 millimeter socket to remove the seats. I got this rental from AutoZone. This is a special tool I rent from AutoZone which is free. When I return it, they will refund me the money. You can uh, turn like this. If you don't have this tool, you can use uh, some kind of plier. Hey, this is our car. 2004 Honda Accord. What we're trying to show you here though is how we have elevated the front end of the car or at least the front right end by driving it up on the curb at the edge of our driveway. Our driveway is here and then you drive it up and this provides some lift that is more secure than a jack would be. It's a small amount but it in many cases it may be enough and so you drive it up and you see we do put a block behind the wheels to to prevent rolling. 
there are six steps to remove the oxygen sensor. The first step is remove the seat because the wire is under the seat. There are four 40 millimeter screws. You remove it from here. You remove the front seat. This is 14 millimeter. You remove here. And on the back, it's a little bit difficult. There's a plastic cap there. You really have to slide this out downward. And then once you remove the plastic cover, then you can remove those 14 millimeter screws. A second step, find the connector and disconnect connector. Where is the connector? Once you open the seat, you see some wires. This and this is, are not the one you want to disconnect. So you need to open the carpet under the carpet. Here's the, the clip. You press this, you disconnect this way. Is this connector you need to disconnect? That's the second step. Need to disconnect the connector. If you want to make a measurement, use your multimeter and see those are the black wires. Those are the heater. You measure resistance. If it's the infinite, of course, you need to replace. The third step is undo three clips. See, look at this. Uh, there are three clips. One, two, three. So it's pretty hard to see from under. I will demonstrate, you know, on this. So the first two clips is pretty easy. You just uh, pry this and very easy, the first two will come off. This one and this one. The third one is a little bit tough because here you connect to a bolt and turn like this. So the easiest way for you to do is disconnect like this. In order to loosen the cable, you have to remove those clips. Which are under the car. From here, up uh, above the car is inside the car so this act as a seal there there's a, a hole there that hole is bigger than the th three diameter of the of the object here but it's smaller than on the top so once you undid uh, those three next step is go under the car you see this is squishy you can squish this so you squeeze a little bit and then push it up so that this whole thing will go up so that's your step four that's the step four the next step five is use the socket this is the sensor this is the wire you see wire is if you chase the wire all the way it will come to this position the seat is above this this is how you use the wrench that will come in you can turn it and turn it as you counter clock turn it remember this whole assembly is connected you need a help on this whole end untwist the wire if you want to save the the parts you have to untwist like this that was step number five step number six remember this is it's bigger so you have to pull the whole thing out through that hole here this is under the seat you can pull your oxygen sensor out see you pull this out here you pull the oxygen sensor out from here that's step number six. These six steps are installed anew. The first step, remember there's a big hole here. You need to do the reverse. Uh, drop the new sensor down. You drop the whole thing from the top for the new oxygen sensor. So this is the new oxygen sensor I'm going to put in. So I will pull it out from under below. The second step is use the special tool. The sensor has to be turned clockwise. And remember when you turn it, you need to untwist the wire. The next step is number three. Those are the clips. First two, pretty easy. You just uh, it will snap on. The third uh, clip you have to first screw on a bolt like this and afterwards press it in a secure place like this. The most difficult part is this rubber because it's sealed tight. It's a little bit tough. You really have to try to push it down so the metal is cutting this little groove. So that has to be securely settled. Step number five. You need to make the connection for this connector here. Step number six. Uh, fasten your seat. After you put in the oxygen sensor, you need to reset your engine light. Either you disconnect the battery or you use the scanner to, to erase.
फिर इसका 